and we're going to talk specifically about intention and subconscious. The person I want to reference is someone named Dr. Maxwell Maltz, who was a plastic surgeon actually from the 1930s onwards up until the 1990s when he passed on. And what's really interesting is Maxwell Maltz got his fame not through his plastic surgery, but actually a book that he wrote in 1961 called uh, Psycho-Cybernetics, which now is almost in its 30th year of publication. The idea of psycho-cybernetics is not, not some kind of religious, uh, cultish, fanatical thing. It actually just simply means in Greek, cybernetics is a steersman or oarsman. And psycho, not being crazy, but psychological. And the idea is that we steer our own destiny based on our intention and our subconscious. So what that means is that if we are thinking that we will fail, our energies are moving toward failure and we're going to fail. And what we need to do is drive our subconscious in the direction where we want it to be. In a moment, I'm going to talk to you about how this is relevant toward plastic surgery, but also it could be relevant for you in general overall. The example that he uses oftentimes is a guided missile. And the idea is that when we're focused and trained on where we want our destiny to be, where we want our intention to be, we move toward that direction and hit it. So a, a guided missile makes all these little tiny directional changes to ultimately get at its destination. What that is is that if you think about what, what, what's going on is that our unconscious mind actually occupies the majority of our thinking. We just don't know it, obviously. Our conscious mind only can process a few uh, ideas at any given time at one point. But where we drive our subconscious is much more powerful. For example, Jack Nicholas would pick up his golf clubs and people would ask him, how do you find which golf club do you need to actually make a swing at a certain hole? And he goes, I just reach out and grab it. He just knows. And another idea is Greg Louganis, when he would go do a dive, he would do something that Maxwell Maltz called the theater of the mind. And essentially what that is is that he would play over his mind 40 times exactly what he wanted to do before he made the dive. And when he made that dive, which was the 40th dive, already 39 in his head, he would perfectly execute you know, the dive. Obviously, you know he had an accident. But we, you know, nothing is flawless. We're human beings. But the goal is to try to execute something in our mind enough times that when we actually go through it in real life, we've already created the right thing so that we can you know, be able to execute on it. So, a huge component of where I want my patients to be in particular is in, in terms of healing. A lot of times when you're going through the week of healing and recuperation or whatever it may be that may seem like a struggle for you, you may be focused on all the negative attributes of that week. You know, oh my God, I'm going through this terrible uh, discomfort or I've got more bruising than I expected or I, I can't go in social public. You don't focus on the healing. Instead, you focus on the negative present state. You don't see where you want to be. You don't put yourself in the destiny of where you want to be. So focusing forward is very important. Again, in the realm of golf, there's a couple more stories I want to share with you to get that point across. One is he talks about when you're focused on the green, you keep your eye on where the, you want to go where the green is, but you look at where the bunkers are. You know where the bunkers are. You don't go and focus on the bunkers. Otherwise, you're, you're going to swing and hit toward the bunkers, but you know where the bunkers are in your mind so that you can focus on where you want the green to be. That's one story. The other story is very interesting. They did a study with two golfers, both novices in the field, and they found that one person that was about to do the, I mean, going through it over and over in his mind was taught by a golfer without actually swinging. He would just go through the motions of how to swing, taught by a professional golfer. Another person was out on the links and, and hitting the, the golf, golf ball all the time, and they went out and actually shot together, and they found the person that had pre-visualized the experience so often that th that person actually did better than the other individual golfer, even though they're both neophytes or, or novices. So another part that you can apply this if you're not you're just looking at the general idea of life, which I think most things in life is, is intention of where we want to be, but also if you're talking about plastic surgery, let's say you're coming from out of state or out of, out of city like a lot of my patients do, you know, you're gonna, there's going to be a fear of coming to Dallas. There's going to be a fear of what you're going to be going through in a new city, et cetera. And I think a, a huge component of what I try to do with my website is engage with you in something called pre-visualization. To me, it's really important that you visualize who my staff are, what the experience could be, what are the options in terms of hotels, et cetera, what is your recovery, and that's some of what the diaries and journeys do on my website. I think it's tr truly important for you to pre-visualize your golf swing, as you will, if you will, and, and focus where you want to be. And it's powerful how strong the mind is because, you know, what I really want to do is if, I, if I'm visualizing on failure, if I'm visualizing on anxiety, 
if I'm visualizing on discomfort, if I'm visualizing on failure, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy in many regards. So, you know, it's powerful. Another idea that I want to pull in from another book uh, that is um, uh, called Emotional Freedom, what they said is a lot of times that our subconscious mind is telling us things when we're asleep in our dreams. The dreams are not just nonsense. And a lot of times we wake up abruptly, we have a dream and we dismiss it and move on. And what the dreams can do is actually tell us where we want to be. And what, what I, you know, I encourage you a, a different thinking, which is put your intention actually not in the morning, but before you go to sleep, where you want it to be the next day, because those eight hours of subconscious training is actually delivering a different result in the next morning. Another person I read uh, by the name of Brian Tracy in a book called Eat That Frog, and the idea about that, Mark Twain said that if you eat a live frog each day, it's probably the worst thing you're going to do and everything is going to be pretty easy after that. It's just a book on uh, working dynamics of trying to be productive. But what uh, Mr. Tracy talks about is uh, the, night of the, the night before you wake up is when you should figure out what frog you're going to eat the next day. And sometimes what happens is there's a constant refinement like that target that's going forward until the next morning and you, and you, and you decide on what you want to do. And sometimes there's a, a better refinement by the time you wake up. So just another idea of intention, another idea of how powerful the subconscious mind is and where you want to move forward, even in life, and it doesn't have to be plastic surgery, I always want to make it somewhat relevant to my field so that I can help my patients more specifically, but I think what I can do to help my patients uh, specifically is to be more general. So hopefully that short video on, on intention and subconscious was helpful for you.